Welcome to Behind the Velvet Ropes. I am dressed to the nines today. Well, that's what you're going to get on today's BTVR, a very top to our show. So stay tuned. We're here for our first stop of the day, Vera Wang. But, oh, I see someone I know, Ralph of Ralph Textiles. Ralph, I'm going up to Vera Wang. I'm going to interview her. Do you sell to her? Yes, we do. You do? You got a job there? No, uh, it's taken. It's taken? Yeah. Look me up in the book. I need that gig. All right. So we're going up to meet Vera. Hey there. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Angel. Angel. So is, we're going up to interview Vera. Is she, like, nice to you when she comes into work? Very nice lady. Vera Wang, we have to go to the ninth floor. Me too. Hey, he wants to get into that. What do you do? He's singing, dancing. Isn't this outfit fabulous? This is day wear for me. Ooh, wedding dress. Ooh, look how beautiful. That's a perfect example of her style. I love that. Hey. How are you? You look so cute. Oh, right. look who's talking glamour Very fat push. you are. How are you? <laughs> oh, my God. How well, I have you? to look good for you. You look great, Lauren. I love this space. You do? Yeah. Thank you. Now, you're not drinking liquor. That's not scotch because you're no, working hard. It should today. be. <laughs> it should be scotch. But it's not. It's ginger ale. I may move to scotch shortly. In the well, middle of this interview, I may move to Scott. You'll bring us two. Right, right. <laughs> well, there's just, like, everyone wants you. You're probably the most famous wedding gown designer in America, and I would even go so far as to say globally. So. Thank you, Lauren. So what do you think? Can I you comment on that? Girl. <laughs> Give me a comment. Um, no, I think definitely we were responsible for bringing interest to weddings. Let's just say that when I started the wedding business, 10 years ago, um, you said the word wedding, and people sort of, like the M word, people sort of ran in, you know, a hundred different directions. And I think for editors, it was sort of a non-category of clothing. And I think what we've been able to do is really call attention to weddings, not only because you have to go and it's your friend or your relative getting married, but also because the clothes, you know, are interesting and people are always looking to see now what people wear to their weddings. modern concept to an old-fashioned idea because it's all about your fabrics and your cuts no question for us it is about that it's not about the same bodice with you know ten different kinds of sequin I'm constantly trying to find a new way to express the different traditional elements of bridal and then of course you know I like to think we're fairly avant-garde as well I find it very interesting that you started with wedding dresses. Could you not find something for yourself when you were getting married? Well, when I did get married, it was very, very difficult because at the time I was um, a design director at Ralph Lauren. And, you know, coming from a real sports warehouse to your own wedding, <laughs> sort of like, especially then, was just like an out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. Really, at that time, was just sort of a formula dress. It was just, you know, that off-the-shoulder, Cinderella, four-inch banded sleeve with a big full skirt and a Bosque waist. I was amazed that there wasn't anyone that had tackled this business from, from the fashion industry. You know, I've been really a big proponent of individuality, and I love being able to offer my client that. 
brides are, they refuse to be dictated to, I think, in terms of what time of year you can only wear this fabric for that wedding. I mean, I think they're, they're much more experimental now and more creative within themselves. So this is a good thing. When okay. a woman's looking for a bridal gown dress, yes. what should she, what's the number one thing that she should look for? She should look for a dress that makes her body look great. For me, it all begins with how the silhouette looks on your body. If you look dumpier in a wedding dress, you're on the wrong track. If you look um, gawkier, you're on the wrong track. For me, like an evening gown, a wedding gown should make your body look and feel a lot better. So I want to talk about your ready-to-wear. I loved your collection. I just saw yes. it was kind of edgy for you. It was a yes, little out thank there. you. It was thank you. It was like asymmetrical, you know, necklines and asymmetrical right. lines. Thank you. I get I love it. Her. I'm she good at what I get. The clothes were really intricately cut. I'm very fascinated by the cut and drape of fabrics. I mean, it was probably the collection that most represents me, myself, when I don't have to be commercial, when I can really express myself. You know, it was young you and know, modern, and, and even though I'm not young, I am modern. Yes, you are. Yes, so, you are. So it's, it was really for me, you know what I'm saying? It was, it was the way I dress normally. You know what the problem is in fashion? That I think a lot of editors know what you do, and they put you in a box, and like, well, wait, this is not like right. what she normally does. So they're not really that accepting. I love to see women looking comfortable and like themselves. And I think that, you know, you're usually out for a long period of time. So if you're not comfortable, somehow it carries over into how you act, whether you enjoy the evening or not. So for me, um, comfort is a big factor. So how does your bridal translate into ready to wear now? Because oh, it's a lot of the similar fabrics. You're, you're right, saying. you're right. Um, it can even be a neckline from ready to wear that I love. Um, I mean, look at this neckline, for example. That's not a neckline you would normally see in a wedding gown. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> but it works. Yes. I mean, and if it were to be done, you know, in an ivory fabric, um, it would very much be a wedding gown for me. You dress everybody. I mean, you're in no. InStyle magazine constantly. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I think I dress, I think I dress uh, people that come to me for a very specific look. I think they know if they come to me, it's going to be fairly young, beautifully sewn, um, for the most part minimal. Not undesigned, no. but, but... designed. Designed, but minimal, and that, you know, usually very modern. I mean, I'm not really the old-fashioned Hollywood uh, glam puss designer. But they're you know? glamorous in a modern way. Yes, no question. But it's not always all about sequin or jewels or cleavage or simplicity. Simplicity, right. Vera Wang and Lorna Zersky say simple is almost better. Yeah. Okay. Almost. Right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna let you go back to work and now we're gonna head all the way downtown. We're Love gonna go you. to Mark Jacobs. We're say going hi. to Mark. Okay. Say hi. You know Mark. I know Mark. So let's go. Okay. Oh, that Vera is so awesome. What do you got? Uh, get your autograph <laughs> Body sculpture. Hey, I look good. I don't need this. <laughs> Are you free? Ah, yeah, this is cool. I'm on the phone with a friend right now. Actually, we're speeding our way down to Mark Jacobs, all the way downtown, I'm gonna try to make a date. So listen, are you available Saturday night? All right, well, that's good, because I'm going back to work. I'm gonna talk to the camera now, and I'm gonna get off with you. Bye. Cool, I have a date for Saturday night. Sabado Gigante, big Saturday, I like that. Oh, we're going up to Mark Jacobs. It's so noisy on this street. Woo! Hey, guys, turn that engine off. Ooh, Mark Jacobs. Ooh, I see shoes. Look at all these groovy shoes. Ooh, I like this bag. Out of my way, cameraman. Very chic. Very ladylike. I love this coat. Ooh. How are Hi, you? Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Oh, you feel so good. Soft. I was thinking about how long, like, I know you. It's got to be over 20 years. It is. 
I mean, you've been doing this for a really long time, and it wasn't easy. No, no, easy it hasn't been, but it's been very rewarding. You know, you have the Louis Vuitton line, yeah. your line's doing well. Why did it take so long? Why is it now that it's taking off after 20 hard years of work? Why not? Some people come along in like two minutes, it seems they have a... Yeah, I think some know. people come along in two minutes, and some people sort of go in two minutes, too. Yeah. I've always believed in a slow kind of evolution. Well, your collection is chic and elegant, but yet young. Yeah, there's a young spirit to it. The proportions are young, the fit is young. You know, it's not a tight, severe fit, but it's a narrow shoulder, it's close to the body. Um, the silhouettes come from like either, I mean, they can be even from a grandmother's coat, but it's the kind of grandmother's coat that a young girl wears over, you know, some funky little skirt or something. The clothes don't scream out a certain period of fashion. Like, we don't make it so signature like, oh, that was fall 96, that was fall 98, that was, mm. you know. And I think that's partly because, you know, there is a style that sort of, in a weird way, goes through each season. So, you know, it could be intermixed in the color palette, although it changes. It's sort of slightly odd colors mixed with slightly classic colors. You know, the thing is with fashion, even if you want to sort of wear it again, you always want something new next season. Now, you use very similar fabrics all the time. You always use corduroy. You're one of the few designers that yeah. seems to really love corduroy. Maybe that started in my Perry Ellis days, because Perry was a big corduroy person. I like humble fabrics, you know, mm. and, and honest fabrics. I like things that are very deluxe or very poor. I mean, cotton corduroy, cotton denim, or using silk denim, or using cashmere, you know, corduroy. You know, I always like the juxtaposition of rich and rich and poor, just handled with a lot of quality and honesty. You know, a good corduroy skirt is a good corduroy skirt. It's all about the quality, but it's like you wear it and you know it's a good thing. It makes a fashion statement in a quieter way, and it's more personal, you know? It's like you put it on and people could say it could almost be old clothes, it could be new clothes, but the one thing that nobody argues is it's good clothes, you know? Now I want to talk about Louis Vuitton. It's just so modern. It's like, I used to wear Louis Vuitton. Yeah. And I haven't for a long time. And now I'm like, oh wait, you know, this is looking really good. Louis Vuitton is very, I mean, for me, it's very in your face. It's identifiable. People love, you know, the status appeal of Louis Vuitton. They want, if they buy Louis Vuitton, they want the world to know they bought Louis Vuitton. My first contribution there was to take the classic monogram stuff and just change it into patent because, again, I wanted the monogram to become invisible but the bags to still be seen from across the street. I think there's some kind of appeal to the classic stuff, but there's a whole new appeal to the stuff that's been updated. There's you know? a waiting list. Yeah, you know, There's like I know. a waiting list for those bags. I know. There's been a waiting list for quite a few different things because they're not really geared up to such change. You know, Louis Vuitton is a company that they made the same bags for 100 years. And now all of a sudden they got to change the bags every six months. And in fact, we did orange patent leather like one year ago or something for resort. And we decided it would just be for a very short period of time and it was three shapes. Well, within a week they were all sold out and people are still coming in and saying they want the orange and it's like not, you know, done. But that's good though, because you don't want like and so no. many that well, everybody I, has them. Yeah. You want people to want something. And certain colors I think are best left mm -hmm. to very limited quantities. I you know, know what I totally mean? agree. <laughs> that the clothes for Louis Vuitton are just a little more sophisticated? Yeah, I sort of play a little bit more there off of French cliches, you know what I mean? And I like that, whether it's like my vision of Edwige in Paris in the 80s, or whether it's like the girls today in Paris, or Catherine Deneuve in Belle du Jour, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we play a lot with the status stuff, and like the kind of bourgeois, but like kind of celebrating it instead of like making it a joke you know it's like we see those women still with their cashmere leggings and their high heels well, I love and that was it. I mean, yeah that was a look that i loved in the 80s but now it's like the young girls who don't really remember it the first time around are really they're, into it they're, and they're doing it again yeah i know but it works it, it totally works but anything works with a good healthy dose of irony you know what i mean when you can laugh at yourself when you can look at yourself and you can say like i can pull this off anything works mm -hmm.
So you're living half in Paris now and half in... In, in New York, in New but York. I'll tell you, to be honest, I moved my cat and my dog, and um, I, I live in, New, in Paris much more than New York. In fact, I got rid of my apartment in New York, so now I, I consider that I live in Paris and I visit New York. Where do you think we're going to be in like another five years? Where do you want to be? The only thing that interests me is the present. Like, five years from now, it's so frightening for me to think about where I could be. And it's not that I don't have dreams or aspirations, but I'm really content to be where I am. Mm -hmm. And at staying that way, I always end up in a better place mm -hmm. tomorrow. So, well, obviously you've progressed because now you're doing the shoes, yeah. the bags. And the I enjoy wear. it. You know, it's really, I, I mean, it's really, not to say that there aren't bad days, because there are, and you know, half the times I want to chuck the shoe out the window or at somebody's head, but I refrain from any form of violence, and I do keep the shoes inside the building, not out the window. Is that true? Does he refrain? Does he ever sh throw a I shoe never, at your head? Never. No, okay, that's good to know. Never. We like that. Professional person, Mr. Martinez. Thanks. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Salon Modern. Modern. How do you say that? I don't know. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, hey. How are we going to get in here? I got high heels on. I can't walk over there. Ooh. Very Marilyn Monroe. Please. No pets. What does that mean? I love pets. Hey. We love pets. Ding dong. New York is so noisy. Hey, it's Nick. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. How's it going, huh? Everything's really good. Nice. So I love your furniture. Thank you. One of my favorite things. The names of the pieces are the names of the streets in New York, like Jane Street, Horatio, Horatio Street. Right. Then we try to keep it like a downtown kind of urban fashion thing. So um, a downtown urban fashion. You're so fashionable. You know, it's well, it. because you know, because I work in fashion so much, so that's what's a lot of the inspiration for these pieces. That's really interesting. Like I met you as a stylist, right? Which right. it means he styles shoots. You know, right. Style... I do set design and prop styling and. Right. That. So what made you get into furniture? Well, the thing that made me get into it was everyone was asking me to help them to do some things in their apartment here and there, and what, and you know what? I'm making all these things for nothing, giving it all away, and I'm thinking I could be doing this, and this could be like another whole like, little life. This is like a light bulb goes on over right, your head. Right, exactly. Like, I need money. Wait a minute. What can I do in charge no, my No, but also, it's money. my passion. I mean, I have a great job. I mean, this is like my nighttime job, but it's turned into like a <laughs> whole big thing, only because I like it so much, I think, and it's like when you like mm. what you do, it's like it just, you, you just sort of excel at it. So tell me about the pieces. Okay, here we have, what, what's the right, name this of is, this one? This is the Perry chair, and this is sort of our homage to like Courage and Pucci and it's all late 60s kind of funny bright so it's it's white lacquer and orange leather straps is this comfortable yeah they're really oh. comfortable and you know and it's all made to order and that's the one thing about having my furniture here at Salon Modern is because they're all one of a kind this is fabulous yeah this desk is yeah it's so orange cool. leather and I like a cafe au lait lacquer it's very sleek I mean, there's not a lot of frills. You know, it's, it's more of a handsome edge. It's not frilly, it's not fussy, it's just well, it's really more, simple. Well, it's more manly. Yeah. I think it's, you're a manly man, it's kind of Well, yeah, man. exactly, I think you're a manly man. <laughs> What's this? This what is cashmere, doing? these are floor pillows, and then we stack them as well. We use them as ottomans, we have them in the neutral colors. This is a collection, the, all the neutral collection we did for Saks Fifth Avenue in their home catalog. I didn't so know So in that. catalog, I'm exclusive to Saks Fifth Avenue, and then anybody else can buy it here. And I did some rugs, wow. it's New Zealand wool, beautiful area rugs, and we do those in custom colors and different sizes. This is Ooh. cashmere, double-faced cashmere. Cash it's so opulent. Double-faced cashmere with um, a polished calf. Oh, it's nice, I right? need a rest. Yeah. This, is <laughs> this is so comfy. Well, well, it, it feels, feels so nice, good. Right? Yeah. This feels really good. So why did you decide this is the most expensive fabric you're using? Well, I'm trying to make it luxurious. Well, all right, how much is this piece? Hello. I think this piece retails for, I mean, it's over 5,000. This yeah. is wild. Yeah, the orange fur. We did this for the furniture fair as well. It got a great response. The editors loved it. It was, you know, it's all just like eye candy kind of pieces. 
that got a lot of response. Now, is this going to last a while? Yeah, yeah. I it's mean, all backed. Durable? It's, yeah, it's, it's completely durable. The, the skins are back. It's all treated, so it won't stain. Did you plan this color because this matches my outfit? Well, I think it matches because we're all in sync. Yeah, and you're matching. Yeah. Like, you have orange, orange cashmere. I love that. Thanks. It all goes together, but it all can go with what you have. If you want to just do some color, I mean, you could just get one piece, and that mm. could be like a color splash, and you have the purple thing there. Oh, that's and then, cool. And then the yellow one up, I can bring that one over to show you. This is very cool. Yeah, some purple. It's purple pony oh, with wow. um, a lavender snake. And that kind of goes good with your outfit, too. This is amazing. And this is like a, a funny printed um, python that we did with some yellow leather. I get the feeling that with your furniture, like you right. can have just three pieces with a lamp and it's a fabulous it's look. It's done. It's done. At the furniture show, a lot of people from fashion houses for their showrooms. Oh, I can see so, that. So, you know, it was like, we're going to do the rabbit chef for show mm. for these showrooms in L.A., and we're doing them in baby blue for them. Everything's square. What you got square on the brain. I mean, I like it. It's very architecturally. Yeah. You know. But I think that's, I think people like that, especially like for a New York apartment, you know what I mean? It, 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 everything just sort of fits in like a puzzle. There's rooms are square, you, you know, like mm -hmm. symmetry is good. You know, it's just like a great hotel suite, you know, it's like... So if I simple. get some of your stuff, all I really need is room service. Exactly. I'm very... exactly. Room and I'm sure service. you have it, I'm sure you have it. No, I don't. I'm sure you have it in your speed dial. Like... On that note, thank you, Nick. Oh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> thank you. Well, we're leaving Salon Modern. Boo-hoo, but we're going to head up to the very swelling Cartier and see what they're cooking up. Jewels, accessories, bags, they're doing a lot of really cool stuff, so... Of course, I need to check it out. We're going into the Cartier building, and we're going to meet Simon, who's going to give us a tour and see what the new looks of Cartier are. See Good to see you. Welcome to Cartier. Well, thank you. The world of Cartier and that watch belongs in my world. It's absolutely gorgeous. You're famous for your timepieces. I mean, whenever I think of the most famous watch, really, it's always Cartier. The always. tank watch, isn't always. it? Always. So Cartier is getting younger and hipper. There's a lot of new things going on here. I see more ads. And you're advertising some new things, but then some older things, like the love bracelet, which we're going to look at after, right. which I love that. So I see bags. Let's go look at the bags, too. Okay. That one, oh. uh, that one's in what we call the happy birthday line. Uh, it's got this, this Cartier repeat pattern on it, and this was created three years ago, 1997, and it's, uh, it can be anyone's birthday, but it was designed for Cartier's birthday when we, we turned 150 years old. Look at that. Now that is that so great? young. That is fabulous. Chic. This is very chic very and ladylike. Chic. When you're wearing a suit, you've always been known for fine leather goods. Oh, yes, yeah. Um, Cartier, back in, the, uh, back in the 1920s, used to make the most gorgeous evening bags. Scarves you have and pens. Writing instruments have been part of Cartier's heritage from the very beginning. You have the Diablo line here. They come in fountain pens, rollerball, and ballpoint. They're relatively affordable. They start at uh, in $150. So there is something for everybody here. Absolutely. For Christmas gifts, anything special occasion. Absolutely. You're doing perfume. Yeah, it kind of been the perfume business. The women's ones are here. You have Panther, uh, Must Two, which is a fresh, more citrusy uh, it's fragrance. Nice. Ooh, I smell good. Irresistible. Yeah, you see some of the simple diamond jewelry. We've got studs here, crosses. Today, jewelry is not something that's always associated with dressing up. Jewelry is really to wear to please yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can wear it with anything. I mean, people today are much more casual. They dress more casually than they used to. I think any of these pieces you can really wear for day or evening. Absolutely. I mean, it depends on the woman. This is from the new collection that we launched last year. Modern shapes, geometric shapes, some of them. But all with a certain kind of flair, a certain kind of feel to them. Well, I'm going to have to try one of these things on over here. Can we see this? Is there someone sure, to open this absolutely. case up? I'm very excited. Yeah. This is total glamour. Very fabulous. 
Okay, take it off, please. I'm getting depressed. This would be an engagement ring. That would be an important engagement ring. And that would be a token of, uh, of okay. real appreciation. I would think one. so. How many carrots is this? It's 20 carrots. Okay, that's 20. 20. And would you like to know the price of that? I would like to know the price of that. Well, that is yours. For the for mirror? $1,115,000, right? But, you know, this is an investment, right? It's, um, you know, like, it's an investment. That's the way we like to see and it. If some people have, you know, some money, they can buy this, and then they would pass it down from generation, generation to generation. To generation. I love vintage. And this bracelet is so beautiful. It says here, all objects were restored Absolutely. and researched. These come with certificates of authenticity, so you can be sure that they're original Cartier pieces. This is a watch that's just been introduced. It's the 21 watch. Chronos Gaff, we call it, and you have, a, you have a rubber bracelet there. It's absolutely waterproof, yes. You can take that swimming, diving. This is the panther that you're so famous for. Yes. Very elegant, all right. This is part of the new collection we launched last year called Paris Nouveau Vague. This is a, a part of the draperie collection. You see this beautiful, the beautiful fluidity to this. It's almost like fabric. Mm. Uh, and these are 18 karat gold beads with little diamonds interspersed. This is called the peruque, the, the wig ring. You see, it That's sort of moves so like, isn't that, isn't that great? Little, little 18 karat gold beads. It's just fun. That's fun. I mean, when That's you put great. this on, you great, know great, you're going to have fun. OK, I have to tell you, these are my favorite. I can see this, you're wearing three. I'm wearing this. These are the original. This was the design that goes back to this late 60s. And it's called the Love Bracelet. Mm. Well, what I love about this most is that it has screws. And you screw it on, and you don't take it you off. You don't take it off, and it stays there. This is the Cartier Trinity ring. Um, people have called it uh, the rolling ring. It has the three colors of gold, uh, the white, pink, and yellow gold, that symbolize uh, love, friendship, and fidelity. That can be yours for $575. So that's so it's very, very reasonable. reasonable. And it just looks perfect. I've always said, you know, people usually wait for, for their mates to give them a gift. And I say, why? Absolutely. If you want something, go get it yourself. If you can afford it, go for it talking about designs that have been around for some time. This is the original Cartier tank watch, basically, and its design unchanged since 1917. But still looks and good. And still, still a wonderful favorite. And you're also known for your stationery, right. which now, a lot of people to, don't realize. Right, if you're going to a party, what a great gift to bring. And if you want to make it really special, take a mini Diablo pen. How much is the pen? That's great. That's $150. I love what is that's like a little stone on here. Yes, that's a little it's capuchon, so little blue capuchon at the end there. Gives it a little touch of, a little touch of Cartier. I love that. Well, here you have it, the lovely world of Cartier. And it's my world now, because I'm taking this one. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. <laughs> go away, Simon, go away. <laughs> we have to talk, huh? I know, we do. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this swellegant edition of Behind the Velvet Robes. Come back next week for more fashion, style, and glamour.